Brittany Watts overcome with emotion after learning her case is moving forward. Watts is charged with felony abuse of a corpse, accused of trying to plunge a toilet after having a miscarriage delivery at 22 weeks while using the restroom. This 33-year-old girl with no criminal record is demonized for something that goes on every day. Those are just some of the details a grand jury in Trumbull County, Ohio, is weighing as it decides whether to indict a 33-year-old medical receptionist with felony abuse of a corpse for her actions after having a miscarriage. In September, Brittany Watts became one of the tens of thousands of Americans who suffer the trauma of miscarriage every year. But a few facts made Watts' trauma distinct. Nearly 22 weeks pregnant, Watts had a rare natural second trimester miscarriage, and it happened 15 months after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, allowing state after state to criminalize not only abortions, but pregnancy itself and the various outcomes that come with it. For those reasons, Watts' doctors spent eight hours debating the ethics of treating Watts even after they determined the pregnancy was not viable. Oh, and the nurse who reportedly rubbed Watts' shoulders and told her everything would be okay after her miscarriage? Well, she reported Watts to the police. Earlier this month, Watts told the Washington Post, quote, I am grieving the loss of my baby. I feel anger, frustration, and at times shameful. She's not alone. From Kate Cox to Amanda Zorowski, women in red states across the country are showing us how dire things can get when courts become the arbiters of whether you live, die, or face charges while pregnant. Joining me now, Minnie Timuraju, president and CEO of Reproductive Freedom for All, formerly known as NARAL Pro-Choice America. Minnie, thank you for being here tonight. Um, this case, this, this Watts case is is beyond enraging. It's infuriating. And it's ju just like her attorneys were arguing in court. This is a woman who is going through something that hundreds of thousands of women have gone through, right? Problems in pregnancy, miscarriages. She should be treated with compassion, with dignity, with care. But because of this climate and environment we're in now post Dobbs, this is the America that has been wrought. Right. This is a climate where doctors and administrators were clearly afraid to make a decision. And she's now being punished for it. I was about to ask. So why? Are, I mean, this I'm no doctor. I'm no lawyer. But this is astounding on its face. So why are prosecutors who are supposed to have judgment and discernment? Why are they bringing these cases? Why? Why is Ms. Watts on trial here? You know, this is a case where. Uh, our colleagues at the organization, If, When, How, are working really closely with her attorneys, with Brittany Watts' attorneys, and they've made the case that this prosecutor has the discretion to drop this case. So it is a really big, important question. We are asking through our various colleagues and networks to weigh in with the prosecutor's office to drop the case, put pressure on the governor's office. But look, there has been a history of criminalizing pregnancy in this country. You know, since 20, 2006, there have been over 1,000 cases like Brittany Watts. They don't get in the headlines, but they're, tra they're tragedies across the country. Just after um, SB8 happened in Texas, there was a publicized case um, in the Rio Grande border uh, of a young woman who was being prosecuted for a pregnancy outcome. We know that in anti-abortion states and in abortion ban states, even pre-Roe, that these climates create uh, an interest in prosecuting pregnancies and prosecuting doctors. And so this is something we've been monitoring for a long time. It's definitely a priority of the anti abortion extremist right movement tied into the personhood movement as well. I just have to, I, I, the, the, the fact that the nurse who was comforting Ms. Watts is the one who reported her to the police. Why report her to the police? I mean, does the law say you must re you must report this person to the police? No, there's nothing in the law that indicates that she should be in court at all or being prosecuted, period. There's nothing that is clear about this case. What we do know is she's a young woman, and I'll say it, she's black. Okay, good. Because I'm like, I mean, come on. 
Yes. So she is definitely in a different category, right? Pregnancy while black, we know you've covered it. It's been covered widely lately, um, thanks to some really big public cases mm -hmm. like Serena Williams. Pregnancy while black is incredibly dangerous. Now we're going to add the trauma of possible prosecution and persecution of these women in the most difficult time in their lives. So we know that for cases like this, when you have a young woman who's black, she's definitely more susceptible to bias and to criminalization. We see it in so many areas of black life and for people of color and for immigrant women, it's not shocking to me that that is happening in this case as well. And so then is the recourse here, um, the, well, the recourse here is the courts trying to get this, get these laws knocked down, but is, is the recourse politically um, for, for candidates who are pro-reproductive rights to hammer the hell out of this yes. issue. I'm really glad you brought it back to the candidates because we know that the American people are adamantly opposed to prosecution of providers and doctors, to prosecution of patients, to criminalization of outcomes. Focus group and poll after poll show this. So candidates should be unequivocal and clear. It's not just about fighting abortion bans. It's also about fighting abortion stigma. It's also about pregnancy justice and pregnancy safe and healthy pregnancies for all Americans. But we know in cases like this post-Dobbs, women of color are the most impacted, and we have to address that and be upfront about it. The good news is we know Vice President Kamala Harris has been doing a great job of talking about this, and I expect to see her do more of that in 2024 as she embarks on this reproductive freedom tour. I was about to say she is going to be doing more starting next month. She's yes. going. She is going on that tour. Minnie, Minnie Timiraju, thank you very much thank you. for coming to the show this evening.